Well, in this video, we're gonna have some fun as we take a look at two budget-friendly hatchets and put head-to-head -head the Fiskars X7 and the S-Wing Sportsman 14-inch hatchet. <laughs> Well, hey folks, out here in the wilderness, enjoy another episode with you. I'm Aaron, welcome to another video here at Gideon's Tactical. That's right, hatchets. These edge tools have been in existence and use by mankind for several millennia at this point, and they are extremely valuable. Regardless, if you just live in your own backyard and you're just doing some cool hangouts with the family and wanna do some fire pits, or if you're a backpacker, a camper, a day hiker, maybe you live on a homestead, maybe you're uh, in a trailer and you're going cross country, you know, and you're doing fire pits here and there, whatever it may be, hatchets are so valuable and you can spend hundreds of dollars and get really good use and have a lifetime's worth of use out of certain hatchets, but you don't always have to break the bank and just because something's expensive doesn't mean it's gonna perform well. And so today we're gonna look at two budget friendly but very high performing hatchets. Both of these tools will come well under the $40 mark um, you can pick them up oftentimes at May sporting goods stores as well as you know Amazon and other sites like that that we'll have and we'll talk about today but they're so um, easily accessible so high value that I want to put them head to head and kind of see which one maybe has certain aspects that's better than the other if you were to ask me which one would I choose I would say both because they both have such great capability and have certain aspects that kind of outperform the other certain aspects that are cooler than the other so we're going to hit all of that today and just look at the x7 and the sportsman and see which one would be better suited for you when you're looking for a compact hatchet that's not going to break the bank but going to perform super well all right folks so here we go i'm going to try to be object as objective as possible i have no dog in the fight i love both of these um equally for different reasons these hatchets um so i'm just gonna use timestamp. i'll probably cut back and forth a little bit speed up the process but give you the overall um, amount of strikes and uh time that it took me so we'll start with the fist guards and we'll use the exact same piece of wood at the, almost the exact same diameter just so that we're as fair as possible so here we go All right, so I got 39 strikes to get that to completely break off with the fist cars. Here we go. Forty seven, forty seven strikes with this guy. OK, so based off of that, um, not super scientific, but real world experience that we just saw there with the chopping, uh, let's just go ahead and look at some of the dimensions on the two heads. All right. Now we're going to measure the heads here with my trusty little caliper right here. So not exact science, you know, I'm doing this kind of on the fly with you guys, but just so we can see there it says two point six seven on the edge length and significantly larger at about 3.2 3.1 on the cutting edge of the s-wing the s-wing has 0.78 on their overall thickness here there and the fiskers is 0.64 but that polymer is going to be slightly thicker at 0.74 but the thing with the x7 is that you're going to hit that thickness right here um, before you even get to the handle paired to ballpark the same area you're looking at a significantly thinner face basically back here and it doesn't f go to that maximum thickness all the way till the very end of the hatchet and so folks what this is going to translate to in real world experience is that what you're going to see here on the x7 it's going to be a wedge format whereas on the s-wing you have kind of more of a gradual sweeping up to the back almost reminds me a little bit more of like a razor blade or a hollow ground um, knife you know in that regard and so a little bit more knife like a little bit more wedge like on the s-wing or on the uh, fiskars x7 over here wedge versus a little bit more contouring and so um, what you're going to see is that though you have to put a little bit more power in your initial swing into the x uh, into the x7 here 
uh, to get that initial bite, it's gonna split it a lot quicker. It's gonna take a deeper bite out of um, the wood. Whereas on the um, S-Wing over here, the 14 inch Sportsman, uh, it's gonna have a thinner face for a longer period of time, which means it'll penetrate with less power quicker, but it will take more energy and more effort to get the wood back to a thicker point here to actually split it and to get bigger chunks out of it. And that's what we saw with some of that chopping is that I had to swing a lot more and get a lot more strikes in with the S-Wing, even though it was biting in well, whereas I had to do less swings with the um, X7 from Fiskars because of that. So those are some translating factors. That means that the S-Wing uh, will probably be a little bit more precise overall for you, whereas the um, X7 will have a little more power behind it just because of the wedge formation versus kind of this gradual coming back to the thickness on the S-Wing. Okay, folks, so we're gonna go ahead and break down pricing here real quick for you. There is a slight difference between the two and some things you need to maybe take into consideration. So we'll look at the cheaper version first. Both of these we'll have in the links for you below, not only over to Amazon, but several of the other websites that we offer to you. We do appreciate it if either of these designs do connect with you, that when you do purchase through the hyperlinks helps me continue to make content just like this. And quick shout out to all the PayPal supporters, you guys who give five, 10, 15 bucks a month, really, help and really appreciate what you do. You help me continue to do what I do here. And if you're not yet a supporter through PayPal, I invite you to maybe consider that simple little here and there, five, 10, 15 bucks can help me continue to do what I do. So with that folks, the Fiskars X7, let's talk about this. Now I paid, I think $22 for it like seven years ago. On average, it still floats around between 25 and 30 bucks. Now, for everything that we're getting, I think that's a super, super good value. Now it is, again, polymer. It's gonna be very high vis. The one nice thing that I like is between the two that we're about to look at here, this has the better stock sheath, in my opinion. Uh, you have this handle that you can grab onto. You can obviously use it, different types of carabiners, other lashing points to not only strap to maybe your belt, but also other equipment and it works very well it's been holding up for years you got this little tab here it swings right out you'll launch it back into place I don't know if I can do that <laughs> one-handed so um, obviously this is going to be the cheaper version um, and obviously polymers and different things like that uh, but it will have the better scabbard now the S-Wing, made in America, so that's super cool. I do like that a lot. It's gonna come with a very basic nylon sheath. It gets the job done, but I don't like it as much as the Fiskars. The Fiskars just seems to work a little bit better. You gotta kind of fight with the, the nylon one that this comes with. Uh, the older versions way back in the day did come with leather. I wish they did come standard that way. You're going to get leather stacked handle as well. And just again, that kind of more iconic vintage look and style. So there's definitely like a style factor it is going to be more expensive it's usually around 35 to 40 dollars depends on where you find it where you pick it up um, who what when where why but that's kind of the average going right so you're going to be looking at about on average about ten dollars more than the fiskars and to really top it off to make it worthwhile it is important to get a leather scabbard now there's plenty of options out there i got this one that covers the face swaps around this one is from badger leatherworks i believe i picked up on ebay for about 20 dollars. so uh, that's the average going rate sometimes you can find some on ebay um, or amazon for around 15 i'll try and throw a few in the links uh the amazon links that we have below that you could take a look at so really if you're going to upgrade and get the leather you're looking definitely more around like 45 to 50 dollars for the overall pricing of this um to really get it to not only match and look really good but also to just work really well and function better than the standard nylon all right we're gonna go ahead and hit handles here and just how that plays into effect but also weight so i uh, weighed both of these without their sheaths the s-wing coming in at 29.4 ounces and the fiskers or fiskars coming in at 23.4 so you can see that there's a significant weight difference between the two and what that really transfers into is because of the s-wing basically being this entire full tang with leather stacking tool whereas the x7 has this head and then a lightweight polymer handle 
So there's a difference in balance, which can be a positive or a negative, depending on how you really want to use the tool. The X7 is going to have a heavy head and the balance weight is going to be up there with a lightweight handle. So that accentuates really deep chops as well as uh, splitting technique. So it's going to benefit the tool better in that way and cut down on overall weight if you are packing this tool uh, and traveling with it, you know, on in a man made or man powered, you know, system that you're hiking, backpacking, whatever it may be. The S-Wing being heavier, obviously going to carry more weight, but it's going to be more balanced throughout. So you're not going to feel like the head is just constantly wanting to go down, which means it's more nimble, more controllable, and more precise. So if you think you're going to be doing a lot of like bush crafting, precision hacking and cutting, then uh, and maybe not quite as much deep, heavy chopping that you really need to chop down like small trees with, um, and you don't need to split wood as often, well then the S-Wing is going to be better balanced for those controlled cuts. Now the polymer handle is extremely durable. It is hollow, uh, but I mean, I've stood on it, testing it over the years. This has been here in the ch in the collection for years and years, used them. I think I've seen guys like dr try and drive their trucks over certain um, Fiskars and you know, they totally hold up. They flex really well in that regard and you know, spring back. They're not gonna crack on you um, in that regard. And again, that just adds to the balance point. And then it has this amazing flare out down here with a lanyard hole. I don't even need a lanyard on my X7 because of how well this contours into your hand and you can swing all day without having to reset your hand. Now I added um, some electrical tape. You could do skateboard tape or you could do, you know, um, like hockey tape, something like that if you wanted to. Just to give it a little bit better grip because um, it is a slicker kind of polymer, um, unnatural, you know, um, feel to it. Uh, I believe that the newer versions do have a little bit of ribbing. This is an X11 I'm also um, working with right now. It has a little bit of ribbing, just gives it a little bit of extra grip. That's good. I would still probably end up wrapping that in the future. But I mean, the ergonomics for chopping and splitting are phenomenal. Um, the difference is on the X, or excuse me, on the S Wing down here, Sportsman is that it's got leather stacking, so it's got this very cool natural look to it. Um, it's gonna fit really well in your Instagram posts, you know, if you're uh, doing that type of thing. Uh, or you're just trying to, you know, have a very um, uh, retro feel to your design. That alone is gonna be awesome. The X7 definitely looks modern. It looks, um, definitely looks cheap. It, it has performed epically well, but it definitely looks like something that you're gonna go to the hardware store and just kind of like pick up. And, and that leather stacking and the contouring is good and little flare out, but it is not anywhere near as um, comfortable in the sense of keeping it in your hand as the X7 because it does not have the flare out. That's actually why I have this lanyard here and there's no lanyard hole. So you could drop, possibly drill it out and poxy and do all these crazy things. I just decided to tie it around the neck. So at least it gives me something there to grip onto and keep in the hand. But because of that slightly slicker feel it without a flare, um, it does want to fly out of your hand a lot faster when you are doing long, hard chops or a lot, a lot of splitting. So that's again, where I feel like even as I'm using these and discovering even for myself along with you guys in this journey, that the uh, X7 definitely, if you're just wanting it to chop down stuff, big chopping swings and splitting is really where it's going to perform um, and outperform the sportsman in many areas. Whereas if you want more precision hacks, chops, you want to feel like it's really well balanced, um, and get uh, a, a better precision with the tool. This is kind of like a blunt, big instrument, if you will, in the sense of its performance. This is a more precise, finer tool uh, with the Sportsman. So that's kind of where I see it. Um, it won't not split, it won't not chop well, but you're just gonna have to work a little bit harder with its designing in that way, based off of what you're seeing and what I've, even as I'm using these, you know, throughout this um, experience and throughout this video, I'm discovering this is more of maybe like a bushcraft tool that can absolutely get a lot of work done. And this is more of, I just need to split wood for the fire and chop down some stuff around the property or whatever it may be. That's where the X7 would come in. Well, folks, there you have it. Thanks for joining me today. I hope this video has been fun, entertaining, and informative and giving you the data that you need so that you can make a wise choice on which one you think you're going to gravitate to more. Maybe it's just high value. Maybe it's um, the retro uh, feel. You know, whatever it may be, I think either one of these tools, again, are going to be great 
last you for years, if not a lifetime, and perform very well. But I look forward to hearing your guys' comments, questions that you may have below. Throw them in those comments, and I love reading them and doing my best to respond to them. And if I don't, then many of the other people that call Gideon's Tactical Home will help you out if you have any questions. Uh, I'd invite you to check out the other video popping up. Subscribe again if you're not a current subscriber. Throwing up content like this every single week. You can check us out on all the social media, Facebook, Instagram, doing stuff there all the time as well. And finally, guys, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. We'll see you out there.